So this video is going to be a quick comparison of DDR4 and the newer, faster DDR5 memory. And ultimately, if you're going with the new Intel Alder Lake build, which one you should go with. As we'll see, there are some very specific workloads out there where DDR5 memory is just monstrously faster than DDR4, but that's far from the entire picture. Firstly, pricing and availability of DDR5 is one of the bigger challenges here. And at the moment, at least, you're looking at paying over double for what you'd pay for a similar capacity of a DDR4 memory kit. So with that in mind, the performance differences do really need to be substantial to justify that cost. The other challenge here is when it comes to your motherboard options, because your choice here is either DDR5 only or DDR4 only. Generally, it's the more affordable up to mid-range motherboards, which will be compatible with DDR4. And then as you get more into the enthusiast motherboard options, that's when they become DDR5 only. And you know, mostly this is not a problem because if you're going with an affordable motherboard option anyway, Way, you're probably going to pair that with the you know, more affordable memory kit, which is DDR4. But let's say you wanted to go with an enthusiast motherboard and DDR4. That's not really an option anymore. So let's say you wanted to go with a motherboard with better rear IO or a better VRM. Maybe you wanted Thunderbolt 4 or 10 gigabit ethernet. Those motherboards just typically don't have a DDR4 option available. There are still definitely good DDR4 motherboards out there, plenty good enough for most of the systems that you guys will be building. But the top tier stuff, if you're building a workstation for example, that's DDR5 only. Now before we jump into the testing and compare these different memory kits, I do want to clear up something that I said in my 12600K and 12900K review, and that's the top memory speed at which you can run Gear 1 for the memory controller on the CPU. For those who don't know, Gear 1 syncs the IMC with your memory frequency and is the preferred mode to be running, whereas Gear 2 allows you to run higher frequency, but at the same time it won't be in sync with the memory controller, and so some of the time you will actually get worse performance. So in those videos I said that 3200 megahertz was the max that the memory controller could support in gear 1 and that beyond that you'd need to run gear 2 which has a latency penalty. But I was wrong and you are actually able to run a DDR4 4000 megahertz memory kit still in gear 1. So that was a bit surprising, there's likely a bit of overclocking happening here in the background for the memory controller, but nonetheless gear 1 which is the preferred low latency mode that does seem to be fine here for upwards of 4000 megahertz memory. DDR5 on the other hand is a different story. It runs in default in gear 2 probably because the frequencies are so high. At least on the motherboards that I've tested I could not get it to run in the synced gear 1 mode whatsoever. I tried lowering the memory frequency dramatically and still nothing. I just couldn't boot into Windows as soon as I made any changes to that stock DDR5 profile. So what does all of this mean for performance? Well basically not a whole lot. Despite DDR5 only supporting the gear 2 mode because the frequencies are so high, it is a bit faster than a low latency DDR4 3200 kit when it comes to gaming, but the gains here are pretty low. By the way, the DDR4 3200 MHz kit that we're using here is CL14, so overall it does perform pretty good. In Cyberpunk, for example, we're seeing less than a 3% performance gain between a 3200 MHz CL14 kit and a DDR5 6000 MHz CL40 kit. Very similar story in Rainbow Six Siege, about a 2% gain there with no real difference between the 5200 and 6000 MHz kit, and we see pretty much the same thing when it comes to Death Stranding. So for gaming focus, builds, at least for now, with the current DDR5 pricing and the relatively low speeds that they're currently at compared to where they will be in like a year or two, DDR4 memory is simply the way to go. But what about production workloads? Well, here the results are a bit more interesting. Since we're able to run our 3200MHz CL14 DDR4 kit in gear 1, I'm guessing that lower latency is what's giving it the slight edge in some of these workloads, but not all of them. The lead here seems to trade between DDR4 and DDR5 depending depending on the benchmark, and generally the margins are pretty small between them. However, I did find one workload where DDR5 memory performance is just absolutely mental for whatever reason, and that's when it comes to video transcoding in Adobe Media Encoder. So if you're someone who works with proxy files a lot in your workflow, this is probably something to consider at least. DDR5 5200 MHz is 21% faster than our DDR4 kit here, and surprisingly, we get another 4% boost by jumping to DDR5 6000. 
thousand. So yeah, some really big performance margins here, but this is also a very specific workflow. This performance also carries over when we take a look at gaming while performing the same transcoding benchmark in the background. And again, we just see absolutely huge performance gains here for DDR5. There's a 60% uplift here between DDR4 and DDR5 5200. And again, even the 6000 megahertz kit is able to stretch things noticeably further. However, this does show that even now with these very early DDR5 kits, workflows out there that require a ton of memory bandwidth will provide noticeable performance gains over DDR4. So if you're building like a 12900K workstation for production tasks and you're not really sparing any expense, sure, DDR5 might be worth it for you. Those users can probably write off their PCs as a business expense anyway. For the rest of us though, especially those just interested in gaming, the answer is 100% DDR4. Don't go with anything crazy like a 4400 or 5000 megahertz kit because keep in mind you still want to be able to run the memory controller in gear one so from a low latency 3200 kit up to like a cl18 3800 megahertz kit really there are a ton of options out there that are suitable and i'll leave a few of them linked down below the good news is that ddr4 is really really cheap at the moment especially in comparison to ddr5 you can get a pretty high speed high capacity kit and the performance difference as we saw versus ddr5 is really really low i mean it's like two to three percent especially when it comes to gaming uh, this also means that of course you can potentially reuse what you're currently using in your system and so you know you do save quite a bit of cash there otherwise really hope this helped you out i will leave some links down below for those who are interested in picking something up and i will see you all in the next one